Elon Musk's £40 billion Twitter takeover has put free speech back on the map. And my next guest is now making an impassioned appeal for his permanent ban on the site to be rescinded. So Father Ted, creator Graham Linehan, went from TV hero to cancelled comedy writer for daring to tweet, men aren't women, shock horror, in 2020 in response to a post about trans pride. The IT crowd creator was immediately given the boot for, quote, repeated violations of rules against so-called hateful conduct and hasn't been seen on the platform since. His intolerant critics were in raptures when the ban was dealt and they even commemorate the occasion on each yearly anniversary. So after two years in exile, Graham, one of the first and most infamous victims of cancel culture, is now throwing down the gauntlet to Elon Musk to overturn the ban and prove he is serious about free speech. And... Graham Linehan, great to see you again. Uh, to me, this is so clear-cut. If Elon Musk genuinely wants Twitter to become the public square and to be a free speech platform, you've got to be back on. Yeah, well, you know, um, I wouldn't say I was, I, was, I was involved in an impassioned plea to get back on. I'd, I'd be, it would be very nice to get back on. Uh, so you would return... If given the opportunity. Sure, yeah, absolutely. My, my, my income now depends on my journalism. And uh, I used to have a, a reach of about... Uh, not, at, the, at its height, it was about 800,000, 900,000 people. Yeah. And even after I started talking about this, I lost 300,000. But that's still 500,000. Yeah. That's a lot of people. So, and do you want those followers back? Yeah. That's, but I, I'm not really interested in getting a new account and building it up again. Those, those followers were almost like a form of currency, you know. And when uh, Twitter unpersons someone, they kind of take away, you know, as I say, they, it's very much connected to my ability to make a living. Another uh, uh, journalist who was banned in Canada is uh, Megan Murphy, you know, and she's like a prominent Canadian feminist who was banned even before I was because she said that's him about a sex offender who identified as a, as a, as a woman. And all, and all you did, literally, was state biological realities, but you did it, really, at a time when maybe the trans debate hadn't quite crossed Got where over. it is, yeah. yeah. And J.K. Rowling wasn't... No, I was pre-rolling, yeah. No, she, it was... But also, I mean, the thing is, I wasn't doing... I wasn't breaking any of Twitter's rules. I was very careful not to... So mis how did they justify it? They, they didn't, they never told me exactly what I was banned for. They said it was for uh, misusing the platform, but they never said how. But there's been a campaign against you, haven't they? Yeah, you? I was mass reported, you know, because, you know, people just, I mean, the, the, I was very annoying to people because I wouldn't abuse people and I wouldn't uh, uh, be hateful. I just didn't take any of the nonsense seriously. You know, and also I, I was early uh, on pointing out that mermaids were responsible for, you know, harming children. Well, yes, and I was going to say, do you feel vindicated when you see what's now being reported about uh, mermaids, when you see the fact that Hadley Friedman, who's left The Guardian, has revealed that yes. there's been a cover-up in the left-wing liberal media, which probably used to be the media that you would have relied on Absolutely, back in the day. Yeah. But there's been a real cover-up now to report that issue. And also when you see the fact that even the government has shut down the Tavistock Clinic. I mean, yeah. is there a vin feeling of vindication? Of course there is, yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, and we're, we're, we're hearing reports that uh, there's going to be legal action taken against these um, doctors who facilitated these operations and these procedures. I mean, you know, it, it, it's sometimes too... It's sometimes too big for people to get their heads around, and they can't believe that it's been going on under their noses for so long. But it is, it's a scandal that's in plain sight. If you look at... Uh, yeah, so, but they've chosen to ignore it. They've they? chosen to ignore it. The Guardian because has... It doesn't fit their woke agenda, it doesn't fit the... I know, but, but it's so shocking that someone like Kath Viner of The Guardian and, and you know, the various people at the BBC who've been... Uh, who've been uh, covering this up. It's so shocking that they've done so when the stakes are so high. When you're talking about the health and safety of children, you know, when you're talking about um, placing a group of, of vulnerable children outside normal safeguarding procedures, then you have to make sure that you're telling the truth, you're not misleading your readers. If you are a Guardian reader, most Guardian readers, they don't know about the scandals at the Tavistock. They don't know about uh, know. the problems with mermaids. They don't know that mermaids had a, had a paedophile uh, as trustee, or a paedophile, excuse me, a, a man who wrote 
uh, let's say, pedophile adjacent uh, papers, uh, queer theory papers, like they, they, there's a whole section of society now who, that simply does not know what, what's no, going on. No, and Hadley Freeman, in her resignation letter yes. uh, to The Guardian, actually made the point that she had been directly banned yes. from writing on the scandal, which is a disgrace. And I think where the social media element is so important, Graham, is it's almost like, uh, as we know, we've spoken about this before, but, but the BBC and The Guardian, they were able to demonise you because they could say, oh, well, he's been banned from Twitter for yes. hateful conduct, so he must be a bad man and he must be telling mistruths. They used that ban, didn't they? Yeah, and, and the thing I'm actually more excited about, because they did this with, uh, I don't know if you know him, there's a, there's a Scottish nationalist blogger called Stuart Campbell, who was banned mm. on the same day I was and just got back. Um, but... Uh, um, but Stuart, they said to, they actually wrote to Stuart and they said, we've looked into it and we've seen that you have not broken any of our guidelines. And I, I actually sent a uh, archive of all my tweets to Joanna Cherry's office and said to her, look, this is proof that I, I never abused anyone, never engaged in hate speech, never did anything like they're accusing me of. So basically what happened was a, a Silicon Valley company which has a um, culture that's extremely, uh, extreme woke, you know, in terms of extreme boy, girl, women can have penises and, and lesbians can have penises and all these homophobic ideas um, has been able to influence uh, not just, um, you know, people who are online too much, like, like, you know, the people on Twitter, but also governments and, and government institutions like the NHS yes, and yes, yes. schools. Well, that's their power, isn't it? So, so given... Twitter is under a new regime. Elon Musk has said free speech will be at the heart of what he does with Twitter. What would be your message to Elon Musk? <laughs> I do don't that? like... Well, I'm not... You know, I don't know. My only... My only the, thing, the, the good thing about Elon Musk, even though we really should trust none of these figures, mm. you know, it's a, but the good thing about it is, unlike the previous owners of, of Twitter who seem to kind of stumble upon it and never really understand it... Um, Elon's a, Elon's a fan of Twitter. He understands why it's good and why it's bad. He knows what what um, what he's got in a way that the old owners didn't. And uh, I think that's going to make for a, a better service all round. I'm hoping, um, you know. And again, I'd like to see more conversations like the one you just had over there. A conversation like the one you just had, the panel you, you just had, is impossible on Twitter because people are terrified of expressing their ideas. They're terrified of uh, saying the wrong thing. Um, it's 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 dying as a free speech platform. So it is. Well, look, I think you're going to be a real fascinating case. You're a bit of a test case. Really, you should be back. And as you say, it would also be imperative that they reinstate your 500,000 followers because it's pointless if you have to try and and build yeah. that back up. Especially given, and again, I hope Musk stamps this out. But you know, there's been all of the shadow banning and and that sort of thing. absolutely. So hopefully, Graham Linehan, writer of the IT Crowd, and Father Ted. We'll be back on Twitter soon. Time will tell. Great, great to speak to you again. Thank you Thank so you much. Don't.